Hey, what's up? <laughs> what's up? Here's what's, what's happening. We're going to go inside, get cleaned up, and then we're heading over to the cigar bar. Then we're coming back, wake up 6.30, jumping in the plane, going to Joel's, and so. then doing the podcast thing there. And jump back in the plane and going back to your house and then our house. 24 hours. hours. <laughs> the goal is to get everybody here to promote Traffic Seekers book, hopefully. So we got a couple copies right here John's got. Perfect. Whoa. Perfect. What, don't? Uh, uh. I want it. <laughs> <laughs> Was there video evidence of this? Uh... Of Russell throwing me down and breaking my neck? <gasps> I don't have it, no, and no one will ever see it. I came to Florida to hang out with in a couple times, but I'm filming the infomercial here. Really? Yeah. What was it? Was you haven't here? seen the infomercial? I remember that. It's real bad. The only infomercial I ever did, it was horrible. Have you ever dreamed of working from home but didn't know how to get started? Are you finally ready to be truly taught for the first time in your life by a true internet millionaire? If you've answered yes to any of these questions, the next few minutes can literally change your life. Oh, you didn't see it? Yeah, nobody did. <laughs> so Rich Sheffern, he's one of the OGs in our space. Back when I was first learning this game, was he uh, recently sold his company to Agora. Now him and Agora are working together on a big project where they're doing an internet marketing newsletter, which is kind of cool. And hopefully we can talk about ClickFunnels on these letters. What are the three surprises that stood out of all the surprises, like as far as like things that like you just never knew you were gonna have was gonna be on your plate? Is there are there things like that? I think the biggest one it was actually. Do you remember when we, when we spoke in London yeah. uh, a year into yeah, ClickFunnels? Yeah. I don't know if you remember this, but we were flying over the ocean, and you know you have no cell phone access where you're flying. Right. And we land in London. My wife, my kids are all with me, and I get my phone hooked back up to the internet, and I have hundreds, maybe thousands of messages coming in from people who loved me like when I left and were right. like death threatening, wanting to kill me afterwards. And I'm like, what's happening? And uh, I messaged Todd, who's my right. co-founder, and he's like, ClickFunnels is down and we can't figure out what's happening. And, oh, geez. and I was just like, oh my gosh, like this is the year into it. And I remember he said something on the phone. He said, he said if we're able to get software back up, and all I heard was the word if, if yeah. and I was like, I'm supposed to be speaking <laughs> tomorrow at an event talking about, I'm just freaking out. Um, and I remember going to the hotel that night with my wife and my kids, everyone was tired. And I, like, right. I kind of put in another room and I was like, this is my first, time at like leadership where I was just right. like, I don't know what to do. Like, do I hide? Do I, do I come out and right. say something? What do I do? And right. um, decided like, I'm just going to do a Facebook live to our community and I'm not right. going to be like, try to hide behind it. Like I'm going to show them how pissed I am and how, right. how, how it's just not okay. All and right. um, we did a Facebook live from the hotel room. Um, and I just again, came out and I was just like, this was, this is unacceptable. It's not okay. What we, what's happening? All like right. I'm upset. You should be upset. Like I get it. Uh, I apologize, we're trying to figure this out. We ended up being down about eight hours before right. we got things back up. And I assumed that like, that was the end of the business, people right. were gonna walk away. And um, you know, every morning I get a, uh, an email with like, this, the sales numbers and like, cancellations right. to kind of see what's happening. And there was literally like, no dip in cancellations during that time. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, I realized that like, people and your customers are on your side as long as you're not trying to hide stuff from them, right? The more you right. come out and like, this is what's happening, this is why it's happening. Um, I think that was one of the big, the big lessons early on that I was just like, <laughs> There's more than two things I greatly admire about you, but the, these two things I question, right? <laughs> uh, not like, I just, I wonder how you do it. The one thing is, I think you have this magical gift to simplify, mm -hmm. right? Like if I would have wrote dot-com secrets, it would have been double the length. <laughs> so you, and I think you've done that in all your presentations too. You just have this way of simplifying stuff. And then the other thing was, is that I also think, and you know this story, but like you just have mastery of like creating an offer. Best strategy and simplification or offer creation. Okay, I'll start with the, with the first question because it actually ties so, back in. Okay. It is like literally simplification of our sales process because again, I, I'm the creative who likes to create funnels, like right. that's, which is a pro and a con is like we have really good funnels. The con is like we've got too many funnels. And um, I remember last year, uh, John, who runs our traffic sitting here right in front mm -hmm. of us, I asked him, I was like, hey, in a perfect world, how many funnels per year would you like for me? Like right. I can pump out, you know, one a week, one a day, like let me know. And he looked at me, he's like, um, two. I'm like, Two, like a week, or uh, how often is like, no, two this year would be all that we need. And I'm like, wait, what? I got, you know, and it like broke right. me. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, we can't optimize all the traffic to 40 different funnels. He's like, you give us two, and then you focus, instead of making 40 funnels, make 400 ads for each funnel. He's like, that'll grow ClickFunnels faster than anything yeah. else. 
And so for me, it was like coming back and looking at our, our palette of offers and stuff and be like, I gotta kill some babies because it's, it's complex, too complex for the company. Right. And then my mind shares in like all these different things. Right. And so we're literally coming and shutting things off to like, here's the focal point. And then my job, instead of making new funnels, is what's the creative we can make, make yeah, that makes to total just put sense. people in. And so, but I think it depends a lot on the business. But I think traditionally, it's funny because we talk a lot about a value ladder, right. like having a book funnel leads to a webinar, to a high ticket. But like, typically, like in the middle is the best place to start because it's easier to make profit on ads, right? So right. if you're selling a thousand dollar product, it's way easier than if you got a free plus shipping product. We got to have this funnel just right. optimized like crazy to get it to to break even, so you can right. sell the next right. thing. So I think it's figure out what's the thing that's going to be the most money up front and focusing on that that one yeah, first. Yeah, that helps you scale better yeah. because you're bringing in money. And then somewhere you leave the listing, like just catch up for two minutes. Here. It's interesting because like when we all got started back in the day, it was really hard. There was no like, I don't even remember how we drove traffic back in the day. There wasn't Facebook or Instagram. Um, and then some of these tools came out and became easier. In fact, I just finished my, my third book called Traffic Secrets and one of the, the, the first uh, chapters is called There's a Storm Coming. And I think that the internet you know, has been really easy for the last decade, and I think it's gonna get harder. I think, you know, we saw 10, 15 years ago, Google with the Google slaps and all the things that happened. I think the same things are happening on social. I'm seeing so many people losing their Facebook accounts and things like that. So I think it's definitely getting in, the storm's coming, and it's, a, it's, it's really the people who understand the fundamentals of business are the ones who are gonna stick past it, right? People that know how to run a Facebook ad and sell an offer, like that's the easy stuff, and um, that's in the season we're in right now, but winter's coming, storms are coming, things are changing, and it's like the people that actually understand the fundamentals um, are gonna be the ones that survive it and thrive throughout it. I think there's gonna be a lot of people who are gonna get caught and not understand the strategies if they're not, if they're not preparing themselves now. You've really created a media company around you and what ClickFunnels does to really, I see it as it's building trust in the marketplace. They mm -hmm. continuously see you and promoting your students, and like, as opposed to the fly-by-night yeah. of our world, Source is becoming super important. Where we get our information from, yeah. right? How do you think about where even you get your information from? That's a good question. I think for me, a lot of where, you know, I, I tell people all the time that like the best way to see what's actually working is to like like try to fill the pulse of the market, like what's actually happening. So for me, for example, I go into Facebook and Instagram and I, I unsubscribe from all of my, my friends. I subscribe to people who I think are doing well and I start watching what they're doing, right? I'm not watching what they're saying, I'm watching what they're doing. Like, what are they posting? And then from the things they're posting, what's getting comments, what's getting shares, what's not, like what's what's happening? And then I'll go through the funnel, I'll actually buy the product and see how I, I try to notice how I felt. So I think for me, it's a lot of just like, is listening differently, you know, trying to try to fill the pulse of the market by really paying attention to what's what's happening, um, because it's shifting so much. And I think I don't think anyone really knows a lot of the times. Uh, everyone's trying a lot of things. I think the biggest thing we can do is be be watching and observing, and then looking at the patterns and see what's working, and then and then modeling those things, but not not copying, like modeling them as like a as a core idea, but then always trying to innovate on it. You know, I think one of the biggest problems is most of the people in that are marketing are all copycats, right? So if someone comes out with an idea and they see it, oh, and it's this pattern interrupt that like, that like all of a sudden it's working because it's like the pattern interrupt and everyone's like, oh, that thing worked. And then like they start copying, copying. And soon there's like the pattern interrupt becomes the pattern and it stops working. And nowadays, man, it's like we have to shift creative. Every, every week we have new ads, new things hitting because they'll work. They become the pattern interrupt. They're working for a while and then Obviously, all my communities see what we're doing, and they're like they're copying as fast as we're pumping stuff out. So we're always, and so what I do to try to figure it out is I look at um, at other industries besides my own, right? Like what's happening in the fitness industry and in the this industry, and we look at all over the place and try to like just get ideas from everywhere, not just from our market, because there's people innovating different places. Like I still remember the very first hand sketch video that came out. It was Mike Geary with the Truth About Abs. He did this thing, and I saw that over there because I was following all the fitness guys, and I saw it, and I was like, oh my gosh! And I found the guy who did it, hired him. He did the first our first one, we were the first on market to hand doodle ad and it worked so good for so long because no one knew who it was. And then probably six months later, people found out and they all started doing it and then it became the, became the pattern and stopped working, right? Meme videos were the same way. We had a bunch of clients in the, in the weight loss space that were doing meme videos. They were crushing it. Nobody was doing it in our world. So we're like, okay, so we start memeing videos and like they were just crushing it. Like we're like, I hope nobody sees this, but then eventually everyone sees it and then now your whole feed's full of those. So it's like, it's looking for other inspiration outside of just your market of like what's what are ideas that we can try and we can test um, and then you got a window where you can become the pattern interrupt until it becomes the pattern but that's the that's the, the game of marketing it's always constant innovation and it's fun and you know I think back in the day people had to innovate once every you know a couple of years now we got to do it you know, a couple times a week so it, it makes it fun